Америки патриоты. Они очень хорошие. Speak English, comrade. Remember, that is about the only freedom you do not have in this town. It's American town. Americans, they have too many freedoms. That is another thing you must remember, comrade. For one day it will be your mission to destroy those bourgeois capitalist freedoms. Appearances, this community could be in Iowa, California, or Tennessee. It looks like an American town, as American as apple pie and ice cream. As a matter of fact, you can find apple pie here and ice cream too. But appearances are deceptive. This is not an American town. However, it may be assumed that such a town does exist, shrouded in secrecy and protected by utmost security, deep behind the Iron Curtain. You might call this a college town, communist style, as part of a long-range plan to destroy our free way of life. These young communists are studying the economic, political, and religious institutions that are the very heartbeat of America. The courses here in this strangest of all schools, espionage as a science, propaganda as an art, sabotage as a business. This nameless American city, deep in the vastness of the Soviet Union. It stands as a symbol of Russian treachery, of long-range communist conspiracy. This town may appear to be an accurate likeness of a typical American community, but it's a fraud. It isn't free. Now, let's take a look at a genuine American town and a genuine American. I want you to meet Jerry Donovan. He's proud of his country, but prone to take his liberties for granted. Well, he's aware that someone must assume responsibility for those liberties, for our free way of life. Yet, when there's a job to be done, Jerry, like so many Americans, is apt to ask, why me? I was a nag. Oh, 
No more than average. Well, well, I'm afraid I'm going to be just this once. Why? Well, this morning you told me that you wouldn't be able to make the PTA meeting next Wednesday, right? That is right. Old Mrs. Potter reminds me of a lovesick hippo. <laughs> besides, Wednesday's my bowling night. Oh, Jerry, can't you think of anything besides bowling and then television? Oh, the way you talk about that PTA, you think it was some kind of a hush-hush government meeting to, well, to determine the future of the nation. They can struggle along without me. Well, what about Jimmy's father-son banquet tomorrow night? He's been counting on that for weeks, you know. Well, now, that is different. You wouldn't miss that for the whole world. Besides, I wrote my speech already. Oh? Yeah, I've been rehearsing it all week. Mm. Listen to this. <clears throat> um, members of Troop 28 are gathered here tonight uh, to discuss the ways and means of finding homes for Trooper Ryan Six New Collie Pops. How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad. Yeah. No, I can hear them applauding, all right. Well, no, thanks. listen, just one more question. Just one. What about your reserve meeting, your next one? You missed the last one, no, and you missed I the one. Well, honey, you did. all of those. All right, I'll tell you what. I will talk to my secretary in the morning and find out if my schedule will permit me to go to the next one. Would you quit bugging me? Bill Martin, here, I asked him to stay for dinner. Hey, that's good. I wanted to talk to Bill about how his team can beat State this year. Again? Well, he didn't listen to me last time. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill, the list of play you've got to watch out for. Now, their quarterback takes a snap back. Right. He hands off the left half, who goes wide. Hey, Mom, Linda's putting coffee on her strawberries. Linda put coffee on her strawberries. Oh, all right, all right. You finish your dinner now. Good night, beautiful. Night, Good night, Jimmy. Night, Jimmy. Night, Jimmy. Coffee on the strawberry? Well, I never was. Hey, go to bed. Is there something on your mind? How can you tell? Hmm? Want to break up the huddle? Bill, this is a play you've really got to look out for. Off time. Linda? Well? Our ages and... Oh, Daddy, Mother, we want to get married. I'm sorry to spring it on you so suddenly, Mother. I suppose it came as an awful surprise. Oh, but... Really, sweetheart. Congratulations, Bill, and I might add, you're a very lucky young man. Thank you. Daddy? Well, everybody's... Through kissing each other, I think there are a few things we ought to iron out. And don't get me wrong. Bill, I like you, you know. I'm not against the marriage. Matter of fact, I think it'd be a fine idea. In four or five years. In four or five years? You're both too young to get married right now. Mr. Donovan, I'm going to marry your daughter. And I'm not going to wait four or five years to do it. Thanks for dinner. I'll talk to you later. Good night, Bill. Bill! Linda. Honey, now let them go. Sweet dreams. Picture of an American retiring for the night, going to bed in comfort without worries or problems. Well, almost without problems. Linda and Bill may mean momentary worry, but in America, there's always tomorrow with its bright promise. And problems will work out. Somehow, things always work out. Now, in a few minutes, Jerry Donovan will be asleep. But tonight, instead of the sweet dreams his wife wished him, let's give Jerry a nightmare. A real red nightmare. Now, you remember that Russian town we saw earlier? The town that looked like it belonged in Kansas or Ohio or Vermont? Let's lift that town out of the Soviet Union. Let's superimpose it on Jerry's hometown. And those precious freedoms Jerry so complacently accepts. Let's see how many freedoms Jerry might lose if suddenly he had to live under communist domination. <laughs> Johnny, 
you. Hurry up with the coffee. All right, all right. I've only got one pair of hands. Jerry's a little confused. Things seem different now, and they should, because freedom has suddenly vanished. Permit number. Fred, I don't have a permit. I just want to call my house. I want to talk to my wife. No personal calls are allowed without a permit from the commissar. You will get off the line, please. The operator. They would give. Come on, comrade. Now that you've become acquainted with the enlightened communist system, in contrast to the outdated capitalistic way of life, you are now prepared for the next step of your indoctrination, which will be most difficult. When the moral fiber of the United States weakens and the economy collapses under the pressure of competitive coexistence, you will assume control. You will move into every phase of American political and economic life. It will be your responsibility, comrades, to purge the minds of the reactionary Americans so that they will welcome the enlightened Soviet system and conform without resistance to the dictatorship of the proletariat. Again, my congratulations, comrades. Continue the good work. Say, could you tell me what? Yes, comrade. Nothing. Nothing, never mind. God, thank God you're all right. I have something to do. Gee, Hill, I'm sorry I'm late. Something strange happened. Something very strange. I was standing in the plaza... Oh, and... Never mind that. But you are disturbing the children. Their meals are to be consumed without interruption. I don't blame you for being sore. But I'll make it up to you. Tomorrow night we'll have an early dinner at the steakhouse. Then we'll take the kids to the drive-in movie. That would be quite impossible. Tomorrow night, you've been selected to address the parent-teachers committee. The what? Oh, no, there must be some mistake. They don't want me. What would I talk about? How Jimmy's team lost the Little League Championship last year? The subject of your address has already been selected for you. The theme will be how the new communistic life benefits children. Now, wait a minute. What if I don't want to talk about that? What if I don't want to talk at all? I would advise you not to object. Recently, the party learned that you were on the debate team one in school. They were very disturbed that you kept this back to secret from them. Experienced speakers are needed by the party. They'll make very good use of you. I'm going to check the kitchen. You look in the back. I'll be upstairs. Hey! What is this? Where do you think you're going? We have no time for explanations. Already we are 15 minutes behind schedule. I don't care who sent you or why. You're not going to take another step until I see your warrant. Warrant? We need no warrant. As a member of the Young Communist League, your daughter has volunteered for farm work. She's to be transported immediately. The truck is waiting outside. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get something straight. You say my daughter volunteered? That is correct. Here is the signature. Requesting transport to the People's Collective. Signature on that piece of paper is false. And everything you've said is a lie because my daughter would never leave here of her own free will. Sergeant! You've got no right to be in this house. I'm going to give you just 10 seconds to get out of here. Daddy? It's true, Daddy. I did volunteer for farm work. Linda, why? The party convinced me that I should free myself of the lingering bourgeois influence of family life. I am ready. Okay. Do not interfere. It is for my own good. And Comrade Donovan, do not think that your deviationist remarks shall be overlooked be reported to the proper authorities. Hello. Hey, 
What's this quarter business? That's today's work, comrade. Hello, Pete. Having a little trouble, Bertha doesn't seem to be in a working mood. The lathe must be fixed immediately. You have a quarter to fulfill. If you fail, I'll be held responsible. I'm doing the best I can. Quarter or no quarter, I can't do anything till I get this fixed. Well, then I advise you work during your lunch hour. The quarter must be met, and Comrade Commissar isn't interested in excuses. Yeah, I overslept. The kids get off to Sunday school all right? Well, it's a beautiful day. Take it back from Sunday school. Why don't we all pile into the car and go over? Hey, what is this? Someone going on a trip? You could call it a trip. Naturally, the children are going away to a state school. Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I don't know what's happened to you or what they've done to change you, but you're not going to send these kids away. Oh, she's not sending us away. It was our idea. We learned in school that home life does not encourage the growth of the collective character which the party wishes to develop in its young people. It's your fault. You should have spent more time training us to think along party lines. As a member of the Young Pioneers, it will be my duty to report you. You better listen to me. All of you. I don't want to hear any more talk about state schools and party lines and collective character and deviationism. This is going to be a family again, and I know just where to start. You two are going to Sunday school, and you're going right now. Mommy, tell her! No use to argue. Ma! This Mom. time, I'm going to overrule the party. kids with those lies long enough. Now you're really going to find out what the truth is all about. We tried to tell you, Dad, but you wouldn't listen. There is no more Sunday school. Please take us home now, Daddy. Everybody's looking at us. Mistake. Somebody made a big mistake. Come on, we're going to get this straight now, right now. Come on. Come on inside. Come on, Jimmy. What's happened? What have they done? Keep your voice down, comrade. Otherwise, I shall have to report you. Who put these displays in here? This is a house of worship. You are mistaken. This is the People's Museum. And I warn you once more, this place is a lie. Everything about it is false. This, this was not invented by a Russian. The man's name was Bell, Alexander Graham Bell. And he was an American. Get that, comrade. Everything on this table is as phony as the town. The rotten system you call communism. <laughs> accused of the following crimes against the state, subversion, deviationism, and treason. You've been given this opportunity to make a public confession of your treacherous violation. Just a minute. This is supposed to be a trial. Who says I'm guilty of anything? Where's your proof? The state needs no proof. It is up to you to prove your innocence. How can I prove my innocence if I don't know what I'm accused of? Subversion against whom? Deviationism from what? Treason against what government? The prisoner has been given his opportunity to confess. I ask now that he be sentenced. Now, wait a minute. You, you've got to listen to me. They say I'm guilty of crimes against the state, but it's the state that committed the crime. And they broke into my home without a warrant. Armed soldiers. They took away my daughter. They desecrated a house of worship placed religious objects with, with phony displays, and they called it a museum. They even tried to turn my own kids against me. My wife. Helen, you were there. You know that what I'm saying is true. Tell them. Mrs. Donovan? 
This document contains your signed statement. It proves that your husband tried to turn your children against the communist state. Is the statement true? Yes. Yeah. Lieutenant Martin. Comrade Kuchesnov. Comrade Malenko. These documents contain your signed statements. They prove that Comrade Donovan is guilty of deviationism and treason. I want you to tell the court if these statements are correct. I will ask you each in turn. Comrade Kuchesnov. Yes, the statement is true. Comrade Malenko. True. Lieutenant. The statement's true. There's no need to continue this trial. The evidence against the prisoner is overwhelming. I ask now that he be sentenced immediately. I want to see those statements. And maybe I'll have a few words to say in my own defense. Prisoner will step back into the box. There is no need to examine the statements of the witnesses. The prisoner stands condemned by his own words. He has challenged the supreme authority of the state. He has questioned its practices and its decisions. And by these actions, he has proved himself to be a dangerous enemy to the proletariat must be treated as such, as an ugly remnant of a diseased bourgeois class. He must be eradicated before the contagion can spread. Comrade Donovan, you are hereby sentenced to be shot. Comrade Donovan, do you know why you're here? I can guess. you have any last requests? Yes. Do we really need these? I don't think I'll be going anywhere. Nevertheless, I'm afraid they're necessary. Comrade Donovan, you've been convicted of crimes against the supreme communist government. Being an enemy of the state, you must be liquidated. I have been commissioned to carry out your sentence. What, no firing squad? I'm afraid not. However, the last favor from the government, you are hereby granted one final chance to confess your crimes. If you wish, a recorder will be summoned to take down your statement. I have a statement to make, all right, but you can deliver it. You just tell your government that someday its own people are going to get wise to it. Someday there's going to be enough holes in that iron curtain that all of your people will be able to escape to freedom. You'll never be able to build a wall strong enough to hold them. My own countrymen once said, you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Believe me, you communists can't keep fooling the entire world. You can't even keep fooling your own people. Because the news about communism is getting around. And it's only another word for slavery. Don't worry, Jerry. That bullet will never reach you because it's time to bring you back from your red nightmare. What you have seen is not entirely fiction. Greater brutality is taking place right now in countries which have been swallowed up by the communist machine. We know that Jerry is waking. Let's see if his dream has impressed him. Would you mind cereal? Cereal be fine. Just mind. I'll get it. Good morning. Well, good morning. Good morning. Daddy, you buy me a new space helmet. A what? He's gone from wide open spaces to outer space. Oh, he is, is he? Yeah, I guess we can put you in orbit all right. You get a space helmet. Hello there. Hi. 
Hi, Daddy. Hi, Mr. Donovan. Bill? Uh, if you two kids don't have this car in shape by now, I don't think you ever will. Uh, if you'd like to talk some more about that marriage business, you better catch me while I'm in a good mood. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> We've got something to tell you. Now, uh, you haven't run off. <laughs> no, that we haven't done. But we have decided to wait. Not five years, mind you. But at least I've finished my hitch in the service. <laughs> uh, that's a wise decision, Bill. Yes, indeed, I think that's a very wise decision. <laughs> How about some breakfast? Good idea. Let's go. Gary knows now, so he'll never forget it. Responsibilities are a privilege an inherent American right, the strength of our nation. The bright hopes of a free world are founded on the dedication of individual Americans, people who guarantee freedom by standing ready to fight against aggression, against the communist attempts at world enslavement. Freedom is not hereditary. It must be earned. Freedom has a price, and its price is vigilance. Its price is responsibility not only of government, but of every citizen who salutes our flag. Those who serve as a part of our nation's armed might, and those who have served, they guarantee freedom's continued existence. Freedom, no single word in all the languages of mankind has come to mean so much. Freedom to enjoy the simple things of life in the circle of family and friends. Freedom to work at a vocation of our choosing, to vote in open elections for the candidate we believe best qualified. To come, to go as we please. Freedom to own property. To enjoy the priceless heritage of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To marry and raise a family with belief in the dignity of the human spirit. To study in the field of our choice. To speak our beliefs. To worship God. These freedoms that spell America, they represent a way of life that has become the farthest advancement of mankind on this planet. To prevent communism from consuming the entire free world, there stands but one man. That man is you. <laughs> 